in the last video, we had this table, this flowchart, and we looked at how do you work a weak acid problem. And just to remind you, once you identify that you have a weak acid, you write an equilibrium reaction, you look up a Ka value, you set up an ice table, it's gonna have X's, and you will be solving for X, which in the case of a weak acid, gives you the pH. Um, let's look at another, what is the pH of problem? So what is the pH of? Methylamine, a 0 0.18 polarity solution of methylamine. The minute that you get this, what is the pH of problem? You go through your flow chart. You say, is that an acid, a base, or a salt? Definitely not an acid because the name of an acid is blah, blah, acid. Um, you should get in the habit of recognizing that that's a base because it is a blah, blah, amine. If you look at the KB table from our textbook, uh, I'm just gonna read down here. The first one listed is ammonia. And you should know that ammonia is a base. The second one is dimethylamine. The third one is methylamine. The, th the next one is phenylamine, which is also called aniline. Then we have trimethylamine. Is that the last one? That's the last one on our, our weak base table, our KB table. All of the blah blah amines behave like ammonia does. They just have additional carbons and hydrogens attached. Uh, but they all behave like ammonia in the sense that they're a base. You can look up the formula. It's on our KB table. Methylamine has the formula CH3. Oops. NH2. It is a neutral compound and that nitrogen acts just like the nitrogen in ammonia. It acts as a base. A bronsted lowry base is a substance that accepts a proton. And so when he accepts a proton, he becomes CH3, NH3 with a plus charge. The guy on the left is methylamine. The guy on the right is his conjugate acid. Methylamine is a base. His conjugate is an acid. They're both weak. This is called the methyl ammonium ion. And he might show up later down the line in the next module, in module seven. Um, might also in module eight, but I wouldn't swear to it. Um, so methylamine is a weak base. He acts like a bronsted lowry base, just in the same sense that ammonia does. When ammonia acts as a base, he accepts an H plus from water and becomes the ammonium ion. This is the blah, blah ammonium ion. That is the conjugate of the blah, blah amine. See how this all works? All right, so what is the pH of this solution? Once you've identified that he's a weak base, then you're going to write an equilibrium reaction. Now you can write it with the formula or you can write it with the generic formula like we see in this example. Uh, we are going to need a KB table. We're going to set up an ice table to find an OH minus. We're going to calculate a POH and from that we'll get our pH. So let's walk through those steps. I'm just going to write it as B. So my equilibrium reaction looks like this. I look up the KB value for methylamine. This is the base. He has a KB value. The KB value from our tables in our textbook is 4.4 times 10 to the minus four. It's equal to products over reactants. Everything is one to one in weak acid and weak base problems. This is 0.18 molarity. This is zero and zero, minus x plus x plus x. All right. And then I set up my equation to solve for x. My Kb is 4.4 times 10 to the minus four. That's gonna be equal to x squared all over 0 0.18 minus x. This is a quadratic equation. If you've got a, a good handy quadratic equation solver on the internet, use it plug it in, use it. If you don't, I might suggest that you try the approximation in this denominator. As long as K is small enough, 
then that denominator, which in this case is 0.18 minus x, as long as k is small enough, x will be small enough, though that will be approximately equal to 0.18. If I have a million dollars and I give away, I subtract one dollar for each student in this class, I still have a million dollars because it's that much bigger. As we saw in the last example, this approximation is not always good, but it's so quick that I like to check it first. So let's check it. And I told you last time I'm not going to do the algebra for you again, so I'm going to plug this in for my calculator. And I'm going to solve for X. You guys be sure and check my calculations and post on the discussion board if you find a mistake. How's that for a cop out, right? X is equal to 8.899 dot dot dot. Don't clear your calculator times 10 to the minus 3. Again, eh, this is not real. If we check it, that's not real small. If we plug that in again, I'm going to store this. We get 0 0.17999. This one's probably good enough. You see how that rounds to 0.18. So this one is probably good enough. Did I do that right? Plus one, two, three. Yeah, because it's in the third decimal place. No, nope, it didn't do that right. See, you got to watch me. You get. Hmm. you get 0 0.171. So that one's probably not good enough. All right, but let's go ahead and go with it. Let's figure the pH this way. Then we'll, at this point in your calculations, you should do the quadratic equation. Um, there's also another approximation method. That's the one that I use that isn't doing the quadratic equation. And I find it, I find it pretty quick. Um, if you're interested, post a note on the discussion board and I'll walk with, I'll, do a video and walk through it with you on the discussion board. But if I didn't catch that there was an approximation here, um, since this is the value of X, oops, no, nope, since this is the value of X, sorry, there's stuff going on out in the hallway. Since this is the value of X, I'm going to go ahead and use it and calculate my pH, which is the negative log of the H plus. Recall from that table, let me come back up here. Ooh, not H plus, OH minus. See, this is a good way to catch silly mistakes. Write it all out. That X is actually the OH minus, which means that I'm going to be calculating the POH, which is the negative log of the OH minus. The POH is 2.05. Now, see, if I had not caught myself, I want to do that quick check at the end. OK, if I thought this was pH 2.05, let me go back up to the original problem. Oh, wait, this guy is a base. I'm expecting a basic pH 2.05 is not a basic pH. What have I done wrong? Oh, yeah, I got OH minus, not H plus. So this is my pOH, which means my pH is 11.95. Now again, that's with the approximation. If there's a multiple choice question, it's probably gonna be close enough. I can pick it out unless two of them are very close, but let's use the exact solution. In other words, quadratic equation, all right? Um, or I'm gonna use my approximation method. And again, if you want me to walk you through that or do a video on it, shoot a post a message on the discussion board. So with my approximation method, it takes me just a minute to get that done.
keep hitting the wrong button. Here we go. If we use the exact solution, if you plug it into a quadratic equation, you're going to get something in the order of 8.68 times 10 to the minus 3. You can see how that compares with the solution we got up above. Uh, we got 8.89. It's actually closer to 8.68, both of them times 10 to the minus 3. And so that's why our pH is a little bit off. So now I'm going to take the negative log of it to get the pOH. Notice that it's not that far off. Instead of 2.05, we got 2.06. And so the pH is 11.94. Again, on a multiple choice test, if we had gone with that original one, we probably could have picked it out of the lineup unless two of them were really, really close. If you're typing it in, where it's expecting the answer that might be close enough to get full credit. It might not because it's a little sloppy. Um, and if you don't get full credit on a quiz or an exam with the answer 11.95, I typically go back in and give you at least partial credit back. So that's how we do what is the pH of when we have a base.